Well, for this week, I saw The Hangover Part 2. And it, while it was a funny film, I think this should stop at 2, because it's starting to suffer some, from some franchise fatigue. Basically, if you've seen the first one, you've seen the plot of the second one. Jess transfix Las Vegas to Bangkok. And you pretty much have it. Uh, the same group of characters. Slight differences, yes, yes, yes. Uh, a couple of different scenarios. It almost seems like these were a few of these were probably scenarios that they wanted to put into the film, but it just couldn't fit in, uh, as well as original stuff. Uh, overall, the plot this time is that Stu is the one getting married, Ed Helm's character. Uh, but he is getting married to a wife of Thai descent, and she they're holding the wedding outside of Bangkok, and he takes a small group of his friends, you know, Phil, Doug, and, well, they wind up having Alan forced upon them as well. Uh, they go out for a drink. They they purposely try to avoid having what happens in the previous film without trying not to ruin if you haven't seen it, but you should if you haven't. Um, and that fails, and of course they wake up with a hangover, and... Stu's fiance's younger brother, a Harvard or a Stanford genius, has gone missing. With the only thing of his left, his finger. <laughs> uh, overall, it was it was damn funny. I laughed a lot. There was a lot of good lines. They got a lot of stuff hitting up. Um, I actually saw this with a couple other people, and I wish I had them here with me doing the cast. But oh well. Um, do not be overly squeamish if you want to see this movie. And I'm talking about full frontal squeamishness because there's a lot of it. <laughs> uh, right up from when we see Mr. Chow and how he's introduced uh, to the tranny hookers. Yes, there are tranny hookers in this. You, have, you better get used to that. Uh, <laughs> as well as a few surprise appearances. I wasn't expecting Paul Giamatti to show up, but he was and Paul Giamatti, normally great whenever he's on uh, on the screen. Mike Tyson, of course, returns. He's a surprising cameo, actually, somewhat with him. Uh, and more than this, his tattoo re returns as well. Uh, one person, though, that was missing that was very much hyped, the Bill Clinton cameo. That was talked a lot about, how Bill Clinton shot a cameo for the, for the Hangover 2, and I looked, it wasn't in this film. I didn't leave at any point in the theater uh, to get, go to the bathroom or anything. And I'm almost wondering if he went like, listen, guys, it was funny, but this stuff's almost too extreme. I think it, it'll cause, and you know, people question, I don't think too many people would, but that he was in a movie with, you know, full frontal training hookers in it. Uh, granted, that he probably wasn't in the same scene, I think. <laughs> Might have been on set, you never know. But, uh, he, I almost have a feeling that's why. Because even if it was a pointless cameo, if you have a former president doing a cameo in your film, even if the scene seems to bog everything down, you keep it in there. So I almost have a feeling it was requested, which is making me wonder if it's even going to be on the DVD release. Um, uh, if it's not on a DVD release, then it was definitely cut out at his request. Or, or at least Hillary's request. Cause, you know, out of the two, one of them actually still is a public servant. <laughs> um, the characters are pretty much all stayed the same and, and actually pretty much all hit their own same plot points. Phil is the take control guy. Stu is the normally mellow upstanding square who winds up realizing he's got to express himself more. Or as he puts it, he's got a demon inside me. <laughs> uh, Alan is, of course, the awkward idiot who is the source of the comedy. He's really the source of everything that gets fucked up. And is the main reason people go to see this film. And then they have Doug, who I... This is earlier on in the film, but they do kind of... Uh, how should I put this? Uh... 
spoof you with like how Doug's gonna be. If for those of you who re need uh, refreshing, Doug was the guy getting married in the last film who they were trying to find. In this one, he starts off drinking with them, only for them to wake up in the morning and find out well Doug is safe and back at the uh, hotel with his wife, and they're missing the uh, the younger brother. And they kind of, for quickly, they kind of spoof you on that. Like, oh my god, Doug's missing. No. Uh, Mr. Chow, though, is back. And back and plays a big, big part. Um, he's kind of the center-ish of everything that got, how they got so fucked up. And they do dive a little bit more into his international criminality. Uh, which brings them into conflict with James, uh, uh, Paul uh, Giamatti. Uh, I like the, f the the father that played uh the father-in-law. Fairly funny how he just continually uh, berates uh, Stu in so many so many different ways, comparing him to like smushy rice and such. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot. It's hard to do. It's hard to say when a comedy is good because the only way. You explain how a comedy is good by redoing the jokes and it's hard to do that in this format so all I can really say is I do highly recommend this film uh, give it a look but I do caution once again that they're better I would say let's not do a part three uh, because well one we run out of people except for Alan and actually that almost might be interesting to see if Alan were to get married I'm not sure how they would do that, but but you kind of saw with this film, they've kind of hit everything. The, the film really it takes plot points. The real gosh, the structure of the of the plot is exactly the same. There's a, been a few changes with a few what the character actually is, but their role is still the same. Uh, some of the incidents are pretty much still the same. So there really hasn't been any evolution, and it's not really a. And I hate when they say it's part two. Part two, when you're gonna call a movie that, means it's part of one big narrative story. This one, not so much. I would say this is just a plain hangover two. That's a that's a small pet peeve though. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, I would hold off on doing a uh, part three. You know, it was just so hard because the first one was such. Original. In that it didn't look at doing the crazy stuff. It looked at having to deal the the next day, having to deal with all the crazy shit you did the next day. And this one even doesn't quite go as much in that direction. Yeah, they're they're having random stuff happen to them that they had done the previous day. But it seemed like the first one was more putting them through the ringers of everything they had done in their crazy partying. Came back. It, and they had to deal with them the following morning. Uh, this one, they have some new evolutions uh, occur afterwards. And, of course, there's some jokes about Thailand. Um, uh, going from, like, the... Well, it, it's Bangkok, what can I say? <laughs> uh, though I must say, the, the drug-selling monkey is probably it is the highlight of the film. <laughs> That thing is hilarious, even when it's just sitting there smoking a cigarette, or biting down on a. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that, actually. Oh, oh, real quick. The other hilarious thing that I person was laughing at was the monk. Yeah, they wound up kept, uh, picking up a a monk somewhere along the way who parties with them, and it's hilarious. Uh, so it is recommended. It, you'll get your laughs, but you know, if the producers are out there somewhere, you know. Okay, we've had our fun. Leave it. Don't don't ruin the franchise. It probably should have been one. You were able to pull off some jokes on number two. Let's not ruin things with three. All right. <laughs> all right. That's it for now. I'll be back uh, with for a review next week. If not, I might do a review in between for uh, with a uh, X Men First Class, which should be rather interesting. Signing off.